officials briefing the full Senate on the NSA spying program. Senator Tim Scott was in that briefing. Senator Scott says all the scandals are a sign of big government not working. Senator Scott joins us. Thank big you. government, good evening, sir. Big government not working. Tell Absolutely. me what you mean. Well, at the end of the day, the more we centralize the power, the more we bring the money to Washington, the worse the country goes, the worse the country does. And the bottom line is you look at the IRS scandal, you look at the AEP situation, you look at the Verizon situation. What we see is that consistently government continues to become more and more bloated. As government becomes more bloated, we have challenges every, every place else in America. Classic example, the NLRB fighting South Carolina over the jobs of Boeing. Not moving jobs to another country, moving jobs from Puget Sound, not even moving, adding more jobs from uh, the Boeing Corporation in South Carolina while keeping the same jobs and adding more jobs in Washington State, the NLRB decides to get involved in the race. This is a, this is a bad situation. You look at the DOJ suing South Carolina over our voter ID law. $3.5 million we had to spend, we won. The DOJ comes back to South Carolina to a little town, Branchville, 800 voters. To turn out, we spent hundreds of thousands of dollars verifying that the voter ID law was accurate. The larger this government gets, the more its tentacles reach. The overreach right. is amazing. All right, so the solution, because we got, we've got an awfully big government, what's yes. your solution? Checks and balances. One thing our founding fathers had in mind was the fact that we had to keep the power divested from Washington. What we ought to be doing in Congress, what we're trying to do it now, is to make sure that we keep this administration in check. We have to consistently and continuously stay on this case. And, and, what, and give me an example. Classic example is how we're trying to figure out how do we re rein in the regulatory environment that's being created, seven feet, three inches tall, 25,000 pages of Obamacare. They're still writing the regulations. We, we need to keep this in front of our committees. Oversight in the House is working on it. We're going to continue to work on it in the minority in the, in the Senate to bring more attention to this problem. You know, I don't know how Obamacare is going to get implemented. It'll be interesting to see because um, they need all these IRS uh, employees added, uh, they say, in order to do the taxes and the penalties. But in order to pay those IRS, I, I forgot how many thousands they want to add, they've got to get appropriations. They've got to get money from, from you. I mean, from the House. The House, yeah. I mean, they're not getting any money. So, so, now, so now what happens? Well, hopefully it slows down. I, I think you heard from Newt earlier talking about the fact that there's a chance that this thing could slow down to the point where we don't see full implementation. That would be good news for the American people. What we try to do... That would just be more I mean, chaos on top of chaos, I think, because well, no, I mean, everyone is so confused as it is. If they find out that the confused law suddenly isn't going to be implemented fully along the timetables, that's even going to make it even more bizarre. I'm not really quite sure that's true. I'll tell you why. Okay. The estimate was 15% of Americans were uninsured before Obamacare started. The estimates after Obamacare, which went from $900 billion to $1.8 trillion, some say as high as $3 trillion, will still have about 10% of the country uninsured. So the fact of the matter is that the solution hasn't solved much. So the desire for change, I think, is growing. When you hear Chairman Bacchus call this a train wreck, I think we're at least on the right path to finding real resolution, which may mean taking a look at it piece by piece and finding a way to dismantle it. So are all these scandals that we're seeing in Washington, uh, the big government, or do any of them, uh, do any of them as a properly assigned responsibility blame on the White House? Well, I certainly think that when you look back at the president when he was desiring to have an executive order that said that before you have a contract with the federal government, perhaps you need to turn over all your financial contributions to campaigns. I think that was the start of all this. So the IRS falls in that direction. When you start seeing uh, in South Carolina, Lawrence County, a, a homeschooling mom decided to get involved and make her country better. She applied for 501c3 so that she could start 501c4 so she could start a simple Tea Party. 2009, 2013, doesn't happen yet. Do you think that goes all the way to the White House? That's just the IRS. I think it will be very difficult to prove how far it goes without any question. But certainly is uh, there's certainly an awful lot going on in town. Tremendous amount. Anyway, nice to see you, sir. Thank you.